Hi there, everybody. My name is Bruce. During our last lesson, we looked at ways of identifying different halide anions. In this lesson, we will be identifying two other types of anions, namely the sulfates and the carbonates. Firstly, we will learn about the chemical tests which will allow us to identify these ions. And secondly, we will write balanced chemical equations to describe the reactions. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the tests for the presence of sulfates and carbonates and write balanced chemical equations to illustrate the chemistry that has taken place. For our tests, we will again use sodium salts, as we know that all sodium salts are soluble. But firstly, let's look at the solubility rules again, because we will find some important rules that will help us identify a suitable test to detect the presence of the sulfates and the carbonates. Look at rule number two. All carbonates are insoluble except carbonates of group one metals and ammonium. Rules 3 and 5 are also relevant. Let's have a look. Rule number 3, all group 1 metals and ammonium salts are soluble. And rule number 5 states, all sulfates are soluble except those of calcium, barium and lead. Because we know that most of our group 2 carbonates and sulfates are insoluble, we are thus able to form precipitates using these ions. We will use barium chloride in our identification tests for sulfates and carbonates. But please remember that barium is a group 2 cation. In our two test tubes, we have solutions of sodium sulfate and sodium carbonate. Notice that both solutions are identical in appearance. Watch what happens when we add a little barium chloride solution to each of the solutions in the test tubes. What do you see? It's pretty clear to see that a white precipitate forms in both the test tubes. This means that both the sulfate and the carbonate anions have reacted with the barium chloride to form barium sulfate and barium carbonate which are insoluble. The next part of the test is to add acid to both solutions. In this case, we will add hydrochloric acid. Can you predict what will happen next? Can you see that the white precipitate remains when the acid is added to the barium sulfate? The white precipitate of barium carbonate dissolves and bubbles of gas are released. So now can you see that we have a positive test which will help us identify the presence of the sulfate anion. You must learn this test. The sulfate test. Add barium chloride to a solution of an unknown salt. If a white precipitate forms and remains an acid, a sulfate is present. Now have you noticed the difference between the chemical reactions of a carbonate and a sulfate ion? I'm sure you'll remember that from our last lesson, when an acid is added to a carbonate precipitate, there was vigorous fizzing, the precipitate dissolved, and gas bubbles were formed. We are now going to investigate this reaction a little bit more thoroughly. Watch as we add a small quantity of dilute hydrochloric acid to a small sample of sodium carbonate powder. Did you notice that the powder reacted vigorously with lots of fizzing and bubbling? Now what do you think caused the fizzing and bubbling to occur inside the test tube? Well, if you said it was a gas, you'd be correct. Let's now look at the chemical equation to find out exactly what gas is released from the reaction. The formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. The gas that is given off must contain carbon and oxygen. We predict this will be carbon dioxide or CO2. We can test to see if this gas is carbon dioxide by bubbling it through clear lime water. If the clear lime water turns milky, then we have a positive test for carbon dioxide. <laughs> 
we will use a sidearm test tube containing a sample of dry sodium carbonate. A rubber tube is attached to the end of the sidearm so that the gas released can be bubbled through the solution of clear lime water. Now add a little dilute hydrochloric acid and allow the gas to bubble through the lime water solution. What do you see happening in the test tube containing the lime water? You should be able to observe that the lime water is turning milky. This only happens when carbon dioxide bubbles through lime water. So to confirm the presence of a carbonate, all we need to do is add dilute acid and bubble the gas produced through clear lime water. The lime water will turn milky. Make sure that you learn this test. The carbonate test. A gas is released when dilute acid is added to a carbonate. The gas will turn clear lime water milky. Now we need to write balanced chemical equations for the reactions we have observed. You should remember that when we initially added barium chloride to our sulfate and carbonate solutions, a white precipitate formed. Now in the test tube containing sodium sulfate, we have sodium sulfate plus barium chloride gives us our precipitate barium sulfate and sodium chloride. And in the test tube containing sodium carbonate, we now have sodium carbonate plus barium chloride gives the precipitate barium carbonate and sodium chloride. These are both examples of simple ion exchange reactions. We must check that these equations are balanced. This means that there must be the same number of atoms before the reaction started as there are atoms after the reaction has been completed. In the first equation, there are two sodium ions and two chloride ions on the reactant side and only one of each on the product side. So we need to write a two in front of the sodium chloride. This will now give us two sodiums and two chlorides on either side of the equation. We can balance the reaction between sodium carbonate and barium chloride in exactly the same way. This gives us sodium carbonate plus barium chloride gives us barium carbonate plus two sodium chlorides. And now we need to examine the equation for the reaction between the carbonate and the acid. Remember that we added acid to the barium carbonate. The precipitate dissolved and released bubbles of gas. Here we can see that barium chloride, a soluble salt, is formed, carbon dioxide gas is released, and water is produced. To balance this equation, can you see that all we need to do is put a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid? So the equation now reads barium carbonate plus two hydrochloric acids gives us barium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. We can use these tests together with the halide tests to identify anions in solution. Let's make a final summary of all the anion tests by looking at these simple tables. Let's begin with the halide test. Firstly, we add silver nitrate to the sample and then we add nitric acid. If we observe a white precipitate which remains an acid, we can conclude that a chloride is present. If a cream precipitate forms and it remains an acid, it confirms that a bromide is present. And if a yellow precipitate forms and remains an acid, then an iodide is present. The sulfate test. Firstly, we add barium chloride to the solution and then we add hydrochloric acid. If we observe a white precipitate which remains an acid, then we can conclude that a sulfate is present. For the carbonate test, firstly we add a little dilute acid to the sample, and then we bubble the gas through clear lime water. If we observe that the gas turns the clear lime water milky, we conclude that a carbonate is present. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson on identifying sulfate and carbonate anions. 
In our next lesson, we will be looking at the identification of various cations. Until then, thank you and goodbye.